Thank you. America is gearing up for the midterms and recent news events from the raids on Donald Trump's home at Mar-a-Lago in search of classified documents, debates about gun rights and the turmoil over the Supreme Court decision on abortion are shaping social media feeds. So what does that look like and who is targeting whom? The BBC's disinformation and social media correspondent Mariana Spring is following what five fictitious voters are being recommended online at a turbulent time in US politics. Those five voters are actually fictitious ones I've created across five popular social media sites. Each character sits across the political spectrum in the US, representing a cross-section of the electorate. The accounts are private, with no friends or followers, but we like and follow accounts and so on. Ultimately, we want to see what they encounter and are served up. We've used data from the Pew Research Centre to inform these profiles. Let's have a look at them. Larry is what's known as a faith and flag conservative. They're mostly white, male, and about a third, like Larry, are retired. He's a committed Republican and a Trump supporter. Pro-guns, anti-abortion, he gets a lot of his info from Fox News. But after just a week online, let's check his social media. So far, the account has seen posts criticising the raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. Some accounts say they plan to quit Instagram for Trump's new platform, Truth Social. Larry's also been recommended pages promoting guns and other weapons. Also on the right, we have mum of three, Brittany. She shares a number of Larry's views, but has a particular issue with big business and thinks the rich are behind a sinister global plot. She's already come across false claims on TikTok that Trump really won the 2020 election, sometimes referencing the recent raid on his Mar-a-Lago home. Other videos feature violent rhetoric about his opponents. On her Instagram and Facebook accounts, she's also been recommended pages promoting false claims that the election was rigged. Gabriella is the more neutral voter, dubbed the stress sideliner in Pew's research. Low income, this group has the highest share of Hispanic voters. She's much less interested in politics, but when she is, she's more likely to align with Democrats and get behind banning guns and the right to abortion, but might have a conservative take on things like the death penalty. So what's turning up on her socials? Well, she hasn't been exposed to much politics at all. Her profiles are generally apolitical, and so instead, her social media feeds are dominated by posts about fashion, dance, and saving money during the cost of living crisis. Michael is a committed Democrat, and his group has the highest proportion of black voters. He values faith and family, and he works as a teacher. He's moderate on social issues and turns to news outlets like CNN. Unsurprisingly, as he follows them, Michael has come across lots of content from the Democrat Party. His accounts have also been pushed memes like this one, enjoying the investigation into Trump. Finally, we have our youngest fictitious voter, Emma. Left and liberal, highly educated and not into God. Passionate about the environment, racial and gender equality, and as you'd imagine, is pro-choice on abortion. What did her social media algorithms come up with? She's been recommended Black Lives Matter accounts and pages about environmental activism and women's rights. Plus ads for the New York Times have found their way into her feed. We contacted the social media platforms where we'd seen misinformation. A TikTok spokesperson told the BBC, we take our responsibility to protect the integrity of our platform and elections with utmost seriousness. TikTok prohibits election misinformation, provides access to authoritative information through our election centre and works with independent fact-checking organisations who help assess content. A Meta spokesperson, which owns Facebook and Instagram, said we have hundreds of people across more than 40 teams working on the midterm elections and robust measures in place to combat misinformation, including partnerships with 10 fact-checking organisations in the UK. Nevertheless, our accounts have encountered false and misleading claims, aggravated by that raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago home. We'll see over the coming weeks what more of our fictitious friends across the political spectrum encounter on their social media feeds. And 